Hey friends, welcome back to another Great Commission Alliance Media Channel Bible Bite. Today I'm going to share with you three keys to making disciples. And these are evident in a short passage that we're going to read from 2 Thessalonians. I'm also going to share with you our team's one-year discipleship tool. This is a great tool that's in many different languages and it's free that you can use for making disciples. Hey, if you are a Great Commission focused believer, you are going to love this Bible Bite. All that's coming up in just a minute. All right, let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. It says, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. Paul is writing to these Thessalonian brothers and sisters that he had met previously. Acts 17 is where we first read about his ministry in this area. He was in Thessalonica for a shorter period of time. You're seeing a picture of the ancient ruins of Thessalonica right now. That's in the modern Greek city of Thessaloniki. You can visit there. I've been there. It's a beautiful place. Paul spent a short period of time with them, but he really saw amazing fruit come from that short time of ministry. And I believe some of what we are going to focus on today is why he saw such multiplication come out of this church. First of all, in 1 Thessalonians 1.8, we read about that multiplication. Their faith had become known throughout the region, within hundreds of miles of where they lived. They'd been sharing their faith and demonstrating it in such a way that everyone knew who they were and who they followed. Wouldn't it be wonderful if that would be said of us today? In 1 Thessalonians 2, we see some of what Paul had been doing with them. He had preached the gospel boldly with them. He had taught them the word of God without remorse, without embarrassment. He had taught it clearly. And then he had invested his very life in them. He didn't just teach it, he demonstrated it. And he didn't just demonstrate it, he did it in a loving, personal way. That being said, I think we have a foundation to talk about the passage we just read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. We see in this passage three keys. Number one, intentional encouragement. Paul isn't just leaving these believers that he'd ministered to previously to fend for themselves. He is continuing to encourage them. This is the second letter that he has written them since he spent time with them. So he is being very intentional to encourage them. He encourages these brothers and sisters with this letter this is an example of intentional encouragement. And we see, I already mentioned it to you, this same example in 1 Thessalonians 2, his heartfelt desire to invest his very life in these people. He was very intentional about encouraging them in their faith and encouraging them in their ministry. Listen, too often in discipleship, we make it all about head knowledge and we forget to see people with their potential in Christ and to encourage them to grow into that. They need a loving mentor that will come alongside them, invest in their lives, be patient with them, and remind them to walk with the Lord and apply what they've been taught. That's the next principle, actual application. We see that here too. Paul says, stand firm and hold fast. Don't forget what you've been taught. That'll be the third principle. We'll get to that in a minute. But actual application has to be a part of discipleship. We can't just teach people what they need to do. We need to teach them God's word and then help them apply it. Paul tells them, stand firm, hold fast. James 1.22 says, be doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Oftentimes, if we're just teaching but not helping them apply, we might be doing more bad than good. We have to be committed to actual application. So intentional encouragement Actual application, and the third key that I promised you, is transferable teaching. Paul demonstrates this when he writes to Timothy, who is co-authoring 2 Thessalonians with him, and who ministered to these Thessalonians with him back in Acts 17. He tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, the things that you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit these to faithful people who will be able to teach others also. This is important. 
You see four generations, Paul, Timothy, faithful people, others also. But you also see core essential things that Timothy had heard from Paul. Too often in discipleship, we just spout out all these different random things in new video series. There are Christian versions of Netflix with thousands of videos on them. And I've heard people say, this is our church's discipleship tool. That is not a discipleship tool. That's a great tool, but it's not a discipleship tool. It's not giving people core essential truths. It's giving them a whole thousands of series long supermarket of things. It's good that it's there, but it's overbearing in its quantity. We need to give people core fundamental issues that they can learn and pass on to the next generation. They have to be transferable that can go from one to the next to the next to the next. That's the only way that we'll ever see multiplication. So Paul did this with Timothy. He did this with the Thessalonians. This was his practice. This is where our one-year discipleship tool comes in. This is simple. It's not a Christian Netflix with 100,000 videos. It's one piece of paper. And it's so simple. It has 40 appointments on it. If you do one per week and even miss one each month, you can still finish it in one year, hence the name One Year Discipleship. You might have seen that graph where if you multiply once a year and then the next generation does the same and that continues, the whole world would be reached, even just starting with you in less than 35 years. And hey, starting with all the Christians on earth today, it would be reached in less than five if we just did this. That's why we made it a one-year tool. It has week after week of essential Christian doctrines and truths. And for each week, you'll have some passages that you read together and that you study together. We have instructions for how to do that. And about once a month, you'll have an application time together where you actually go out and apply this together. And you'll also even have a few relational times. Those are scheduled in here where you just go do something fun. Just like Paul said, he invested his very life in the Thessalonians. All those things are right here in this little tool. It's free. You can get it at greatcommissionalliance.org slash OID. That's greatcommissionalliance.org slash OID. It's free, and it's not just free. It's free in many languages. We have it in many languages, and more are coming all the time. So this is a great tool that you can use, and it's a great tool that can easily multiply. You print it front and back, fold it, and it fits nicely in your Bible. So you can carry it around with you so it's ready to use in discipleship when you need it. And you can then pass it on to the person you're discipling, and they'll be able to go through it with the next generation of disciples. Hey, you saw the English one? Here is the Spanish one. Here's one in one of the South Asian languages. Here's one in Farsi. Here it is in Burmese. Here it is in Urdu. Here it is in Dutch for all your Dutch friends. Here it is in Swahili. Here it is in Kirundi. And here it is in French. Like I said, there are other languages as well. Hey, I hope you enjoy today's Bible Bite on discipleship, and I hope you'll go to greatcommissionalliance.org slash OID to get this free, easy-to-use, transferable discipleship tool that will help you apply everything you learned in today's Bible Bite. Hey, if you watched this far and you're wondering what in the world is discipleship all about and maybe you don't know Jesus yet, I encourage you, put your faith and trust in him right now. Tell him that. Say, Jesus, I really believe who you are is true, and I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again to give me eternal life. Please be my Savior and Lord. If you prayed that today, go to growingwithjesus.com. That's growingwithjesus.com and find some great next steps for your walk with God. You'll actually find this online with videos for each appointment. Go to growingwithjesus.com. If you just made that decision to trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord today, if you already know Jesus, Please, I encourage you, go all in on his Great Commission plan. Share your faith boldly. Make disciples. Use our Great Commission Alliance one-year discipleship tool. Hey, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the Great Commission Alliance media channel on YouTube. And get so many other great videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll catch you again next time.